While modern cars have featured some massive L's lately in terms of feature bloating, there are some staples that we admire and adore, so here are 5 modern car features we all love. I'm a sucker for flex mobiles of all kinds, and the hardest way to flex is to enter and exit your car with some custom doors. This is how doors open on your house, and that's boring as crap putting me to sleep. Meanwhile, this is how doors be opening on spaceships, on Japanese interiors, which we know that whenever anything the West does, you know, what, what our houses do, boring. When Japan does something, boom, interesting. Just kidding, I'm not actually like that, but apparently the internet is. Anyways, the slide, the swoop, the up sweep. I want it all. Oh, yeah. Baby, look at these doors. They make me so hard. Whether it's scissor doors, which were actually made by Alfa Romeo, by the way, so it's kind of weird that people call them Lambo doors because Lamborghini is actually the one that makes them. And yeah, I've already got a try hard, nerdy ass video where I explain all of these, but um, you can watch that after this one, anyways. Or butterfly doors, which, by the way, uh, they're not butterfly doors here in this video from Little Pump. And oh no, here I go again, being a try hard, actually nerd guy. This is what happens when you're in the car community for six years. This is what happens when you make content for them. Anyways, gold wing doors, which we all know are called gold wing because they look like seagulls. You you know, goals. Goal! Look at this goal! <laughs> Or my personal favorite, Koenigsegg Dihedral Synchro Helix Actuation Doors, also known as minivan doors. That just, um, do that, do, do that. Yeah, okay. Look at that slide, bro. Regular doors, cringe. Get that crap out of here. Unless, of course, it goes backwards. Gotta love me some sewer slide doors. You have to say it like that, otherwise you two may accidentally file this under. Be it a Lincoln, a Rolls Royce, or even customs on a 300C, give me some of that sewer slide, baby. Even though these literally add no power gains to your car, they might even add weight in some situations depending on how complex the hinges are, and in other cases they actually reduce weight because they have less moving parts. But to the companies that do try to spice it up, baby, make things a little interesting, I think they're doing a great job, and I'd like to see all kinds of different door opening styles in the future. Maybe someday there'll be a point where regular door car openings may not even be considered regular because not enough cars will do that anymore. Because let's be real, all it ends up resulting in is us constantly hitting each other's doors on each other in parking lots. Like, doors going up unironically. I I've gotten so used to it on my Z06, I actually forget sometimes how annoying it is to park my Mustang in certain areas. Because I'll be- I'll like park it, right? And then I'll have to squeeze out of my freaking- The Mustang's first hinge that it sets out to is quite out there, you know, I don't got a big waistline or anything, but like I said, these people, they be parking real whack out here in the city, or even worse, the parking spot in general may just be super tiny, so the people next to you are probably still parking correctly, it, it just be like that, but just with doors up, I've never had to think about it, and again, with motorcycles, I really don't have to think about it, so that's probably another reason this has bugged me lately, is Backup cameras. You know how many MFs used to crash in a parking lot without these? In fact, now that I think about it, uh, you know how many MFs still crash in the parking lot with these? Well, at least when they do it, they can fully realize how stupid they were as they watched themselves slam into pedestrians, poles, and cars. Like, my Mustang Cali has a backup camera, right? Yet it still blows my mind that the previous owner somehow backed her into a pole. Of course, I've long replaced her bumper at this point because, well, duh, I got side impacted in like 2018. Maybe stupid is just stupid, or as the internet likes to say, skill issue. Regardless, for the people who are good drivers, a tool to aid in more safety is always much more appreciated, especially for cars with low visibility rear windows, so skill issue aside, I'll give everyone with a mid-engine car, you guys get a huge homie pass here because I understand the frustration that these cars will have backing them up if you ever looked at old Gallardos or ever had the opportunity to sit inside of them, or Lotus Elises, I can still feel the frustration of actually backing these cars up and how difficult it must be be to deal with tiny windows or bad angles or really large C pillars. So in their case, it's really nice to have a backup camera. This, you know what's better than backup cameras though? Rear view live feed cameras. These are so cool. I know I usually am not super big into adding a bunch of technology into cars, like I'm the same guy who still would rather have a physical blind spot mirror instead of a blind spot sensor, because I'm still scared the sensor will fail to sense a motorcycle or just run out of battery someday, or have the wires be chewed off by a mouse or something, which yes, happens a lot, especially in the countryside. They also uh, like to crawl into your cabin air filter and crap it in a bunch, which then causes your car to smell like crap the next time you turn AC on. Ask me how I know. Living out in the country in the Midwest, 
really do be like that. However though, rear view cameras. I don't mind these as much since most of them can still double as a regular rear view mirror when turned off. That's good engineering. It's nice to add something new, but it's always great to keep something simple as a fallback. It's kind of like how Corvettes have electronic doors, but they still have mechanical latches underneath just in case you need to get out of them, or the battery dies, or so on and so forth. The reason these are so cool is they kind of remind me of if you ever played like video games and you see like the rear view camera and the old school first person views. Really smooth, really clean. Camera technology has advanced a lot. We can fit really intricate components into small things like this. And this is one of the newer technologies that I think is good to include. I'm always down for more cameras, more safety. Of all the things that we could feature bloat onto cars, it's nice to see that these are actually a welcome addition, especially again for mid-engine cars. If you enjoyed this video so far, or if you have an entry that I haven't mentioned yet, tell me down below in the comments what your favorite modern car feature is, and maybe I'll muster up the strength to uh, make another sequel to it. I probably won't. Now, I mean, it depends on how this video does, so, you know, you can like the video, you can share it to your friends, if you don't have friends, just watch it again. And subscribe if you love more automotive content. Clear taillights, whether it's sedans, coupes, coupes, crepes, trucks, and vans, and god forbidden SUVs, it still makes them look cool as ever living hell. Even scooters look amazing with clear taillights, like look at this Kimco AK550, this comes with it stock. You don't even need to do a turn signal delete either, because it has the turn signals integrated into the bodywork while still passing American DOT standards and regulations. How the heck does a scooter company, like how do they outdo motorcycle companies when it comes to integrated turn signals and clear lights? Uh, I know this may sound childish, but the other reason I don't like red tail lights is because I'm just not a fan of the way cherry red taillights look on cars, I guess. Just know this is my personal opinion, right? But in every other aspect of life, I love the color red. But for some reason, I just don't like them on cars. And I think part of that reason is because if you have a red painted car, you just don't get to enjoy the rear view of it as much because the stupid red taillights just sit there and just kind of make it look like one giant continuous color with no brakes in it. And yes, of course, when you hit your brake lights, obviously the reds lights up, so, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when a car is just sitting still, because to me, that's one of the greatest times to admire it. And when you add clear taillights to red cars, all of a sudden, they pop. And in fact, even on white cars, clear taillights still pop. They don't camouflage into it like red taillights kind of do into red cars. Now, of course, all of my anti-red taillight sentiment doesn't even come close to how much I don't like try-hard edge lore tumbler profile having 4chan using reddit doom posting kaneki pfp using tinted blacked out opaque taillights so clear taillights you know they're just my de facto fave because when you compare them to their opposition it's literally non-existent competition like i know that's again this might just be my personal preference but to me it's the difference is so vast that the other two don't even they're just blown out of the water like if i had to use comparison clear taillights are like nimitz class aircraft care and blacked out ones are like the admiral kuznetsov and it's cloud of smoke. Red taillights would just be some random freighter ship. Like, sure, they work. It's not broken. It's reliable. But they're boring. Fighter jets, though, those are cool. Especially when you got them runways and catapults. I gotta stop myself before this becomes an entirely different video. Now on to the final entry, launch control. I've seriously barely used this feature on my car as I always prefer to manually feel it out. I'm just gonna be like that. It's easier to do. In my opinion, it's easier to do. Not gonna lie though, the few times it does hit, again, depending on cars on my own Z06, it's, um, I've gotten a 3.5 seconds 0 to 60 with launch control. I've gotten a 2.5 0.85 with my foot so that goes to show how why I don't use it on my car but for some cars it's very very good and especially all-wheel drive cars ain't nothing more fun than getting a satisfying launch I don't necessarily consider launch control a cheat code of sorts as it's very nice to use on prep drag strips or when you're just screwing around on a back road and just want to see what your car is 0 to 60 or 0 to 100 or quarter mile is or whatever I do however recommend that you don't use it as a crutch like I said depending on vehicles it may actually yield worse results or the computer for it may be too finicky. Calibrated from factory, I think the reason mine isn't that great is because I've never recalibrated it for how much horsepower my Corvette
Corvette makes now. I'm almost 200 north of what the car was stock, so it probably is confusing the stock system. I do have a custom two-step system. That one I've gotten better success of launching, around 3.2 seconds. Again, I just use my foot, and I highly recommend that to most people still. It's fun to play around with launch control, and again, on some cars, it's really, really good, but never, ever, ever use it as a crutch or an excuse to never fully learn your car's pedal. This is something where I would consider a fantastic modern feature, and I do love the appreciation for it, but I think it's still ways away before it's super duper optimized. Again, for all cars, I know for some cars it works like a missile, or like, use this on an Audi R8, it's gonna be great. On a Lamborghini Huracan, which is basically, you know, same car, same stuff, basically, also works great. Nissan GTR also works great. Uh, you might void your warranty, though, but it works great. But any situation where you're not driving in a straight line, or if you actually intend to use your car for literally anything other than just racing from a dig, whether it's tracking, autocrossing, toge, you always have to learn throttle management because you're not going to menu through three interfaces mid-turn and then use launch control to shoot you out of the corner because you're also not coming out of the corner from a dead stop at zero. I hope you're not. I mean, if you're driving correctly, you're carrying speed through turns. And that's exactly why I think you should never use it to substitute actual driver skill or knowledge of maintaining your car's throttle. Again, as I kind of just poked fun midway through the entry, if you get good enough at just feeling out with your feet and just getting a good sense of your car's power, learning your own throttle not only is great to become a good driver through the corners, you can just race faster, especially stoplight to stoplight, because you may not always have the time to dig through three menus and push a bunch of buttons to make the computer do it for you. It's just so satisfying when you can do it on the fly, on command. Because even if it can calibrate or account for different acclimate weather or different road surfaces and conditions, there's something so cool knowing that you yourself can always do that. Because then you can just drive safely, even aside from launching your car, like I said, going through corners, drifting, trying to regain control, blah blah blah. And there ain't nothing wrong with just having some of those numbers in your head. I know, I know I like to make fun of spec sheet nerds, but you do get some security knowing that you you bought something that came pretty decently close, if not about the same as advertised. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and make sure to leave a comment down below, even if it is about Nimitz class aircraft carriers instead. Like this video, subscribe for more automotive content, and share this to your friends. Or if you don't have friends, share it to your pet F slash A18 Super Hornet. Other than that, Blade Angel out.